Kia ora koutou, um, ko Scott Toko um, uh, I'm here with my colleagues Rishab, who started last week, uh, come out of Auckland, Auckland University. He graduated, um, had his final exam two weeks ago, so he's very, very excited to be joining our team as our um, intern over summer and, and beyond, hopefully, as a systems and customer success champion. So, um, and I've also got my software developer Thomas Brown here as well, who um, came out of Vic University a year ago and he's been working for the last 12 months on um, helping us make Immerse Me into a virtual reality compatible product. So what we're doing is we're taking, bringing languages to life basically. So I'm just going to jump right in and show you. Um, so we'll, we'll do that French Caf um, bakery scene to start with, but we're working with schools all around the world um, to help um, bring curriculum, the language curriculum to life. So. The idea is that you get dropped into a real life scenario, 360 video, um, and we have speech recognition to allow you to interact with the um, native speaker. Bonjour, je voudrais du pain, s'il vous plaît. Quelle sorte de pain voulez-vous? Est-ce que je peux avoir une baguette, s'il vous plaît? Does anyone know what she just what she just said? Voila, here you are. Um, très bien, très bien. Anyone? Très bien. Very good. Uh, un ojo, s'il vous plaît. Un ojo, s'il vous plaît. Ah, ojo, yeah. One euro? Yeah, no, no way? Yeah. Uh, nice to meet you, mate. Been, been, a, been a while. Um, so yeah, here we go. So we've also got the text on the screen to help students with reading and listening um, and obviously speaking. We've also got a writing mode as well, which I can show you. But the idea is that we get you to actually interact. So you can have um, translations presented. You can slow down the audio, the native speaker. Obviously, this is the VR mode. So if you've got a headset on, just pop it into, pop it into VR and it wraps around you. But you can use it on a computer. Oops, I probably shouldn't touch that. Um, someone in Zoom just went like, whoa! <laughs> um, and um, tablet and mobile, because that's really important from, um, from our customer's perspective, is that a lot of students have a device now in classrooms, and so that's what they've got on them. So although VR, it is VR compatible, um, it's only still a small percentage of our usage comes from VR. Um, and we've had about 75,000 students um, set up with accounts over the last four years while we've been developing this product. Um, and we're starting to work with some pretty interesting um, people. We've got the US Air Force um, piloting, no pun intended, uh, immerse me with, all of, uh, with some cadets um, at, their US, at their Colorado Springs um, Air Force Base at the moment. Um, and they're really enjoying being able to have their curriculum in this format. Um, and so Rashad's actually working on an AI powered lesson generator which will allow them to write conversations and have uh, an avatar to talk to as a starting point before maybe we record it in 360 and have it as a kind of an authentic um, video clip. So we're going to actually hopefully talk to someone like Soul Machines today about their avatar and a few others that are on the marketplace um, to try and bring um, that technology in and allow users, teachers, students to create interactive lessons using speech AI, um, so speech to text and then text to speech. So when they write a sentence, they can then listen to that sentence out loud in the foreign language. And then it helps them when it comes to speaking because then they can listen to model the language and record it themselves. Hopefully that's going to all lead to better outcomes for students. So we're about to start a study with the University of Oxford um, on learning outcomes, so i.e. are they getting better results in their exams. Um, and we have another study happening with a couple of universities looking at teachers' um, understanding of this technology and ability to apply it to their curriculum um, right now. So it's all happening um, and we're sort of trying to lead the way when it comes to languages education. So I'll just finish this conversation. She's asked me for a euro, I better say, here you go, voila. Um, and then bonjourne is um, have a nice day. Actually, if you want to know a little French lesson here, bonjour, which you probably know as hello, which means good day. Um, bonjourne means um, like good rest of your day. So that's a little, little translation for you. Um, and so we click the mic. Voila, bonjourne. And you might have seen the little comic book pop-ups were starting to kind of make it a bit more um, gamey. So 
Next week we're bringing out um, little Immerse Me coins that you earn instead of points and you'll be able to sort of eventually start um, building like a little French avatar and things like that and decorating your like homepage and stuff like that um, just to motivate and give reward or something to spend your work on, your effort. Um, and so we work with language teachers to develop um, scaffolding so it's kind of allowing students to start at a basic level and then work their way to, to becoming a bit more autonomous and using the language and coming up with the language themselves. So we have these different learning modes. Pronunciation is what we just did where you're shown the sentence and you just have to speak it. You can listen and reply as many times as you need to. Typing is where you see it written out already, but you just type it in yourself. So you're kind of getting familiar with how to use correct accented letters and punctuation. Then spelling moves into more of an unstructured, um, you, you just listen and type the sentence from memory. And translation, you see the conversation oh, written out in, um, in English, and you are now expected to now produce the French yourself. So you're having to translate, um, which is a higher level thinking skill. Uh, and then immersion is you're given a, um, an instruction like greet and ask for a loaf of bread politely, but that instruction's in French and you're given some keywords and you have to interpret and produce the target sentence given that information. So that ultimately is just one step away from being able to walk into a cafe and deliver the right um, sentence in that context. So it's pretty cool to think that we can take someone from no understanding um, through to almost autonomy within the space of a few minutes given that we're putting them into that context straight away and allowing them to repeat until they feel more fluent. And hopefully um, that helps with achieving better learning outcomes. So kind of the gist of what we're trying to do is there. And as a teacher, they can go into kind of a back-end system and access um, a teacher dashboard, which gives them stats on um, usage, shows them recent activities, how many um, responses have been recorded. And what's really exciting about this for teachers is that they would love to be able to interact with every one of their students in, these, in this kind of way, in an authentic sort of interactive um, contextual way, but they're limited to themselves and having 30 students in a room. It's almost impossible to actually speak and listen to each student, so it's saving them time by allowing them to have all the students spread out on their devices around the room, and it's pretty funny. You go into classes and you see them all and they are like got their headphones on and they're all talking French and suddenly the classroom is filled with French which is like a dream come true for like some teachers have been in tears from this like experience because it's the first time they've ever had all their students engaging in the target language in their entire career. So it's like kind of interesting and, and the fact that they can now have their students go home and practice their speaking and listening without um, you know, someone at home who can interact with them. Um, we're getting emails from parents being like, oh my gosh, my daughter's in the next room talking Italian. This is amazing. Like, and that family may have links to Italy and things like that, especially in Australia. So it's engaging. It's, um, it's pretty simple. It's just 360 video speech recognition. But the way we're putting it together is very much informed by the teachers and the pedagogy is um, kind of being tweaked all the time so that we're actually pro providing something that's not just um, entertaining or cool from a tech factor, but actually providing an educational outcome. Um, and so we're doing a bunch of things with um, this AI technology that Rishab's working on and what Tom's doing at the moment is he's working on a working memory mode where the prompt is shown and then you start a five second timer, the prompt is taken away, you wait five seconds, then you record the sentence. What you're doing is you're using, you're having to commit that sentence into your working memory, which is your kind of RAM, and then you have to produce it um, without help, which is I think going to help with retention of content um, in the long term. So we're going to study that and see if that actually helps um, as well. It's a technique that lots of language teachers will use in their classrooms, so we can help them do that at scale. Um, and yeah, at the moment we're trying to sort of um, target, I guess, schools, clusters of schools, like school districts in the US. Um, we've got a, a Colorado um, district over there uh, in Colorado looking at using this with their students at the moment. We're working on channel partnerships um, with a VR um, hardware, not hardware, uh, VR um, company, a company that's bringing together kind of the hardware and selling enterprise um, sales into Latin America um, to help um, bring technology into classrooms over there and they've chosen us as their um, English immersion software VR provider. Um, and so we should hear any day actually whether the Ministry of Education in Panama um, will be our first um, contract um, and they're looking at purchasing 50 Oculus Quest 2s and um, having some schools in Panama 
pilot products like ImmerseMe um, and hopefully bringing English immersion into the classroom. And I guess now that COVID's happened, um, I got an email this morning from the um, government in Canada who need their staff to have a certain level of language um, before going on overseas placements. And they usually would take them on a famil um, to the country beforehand to get some immersion and culture and language. Uh, and they emailed me saying, we obviously can't do that now, um, but we want our staff to have that familiarity. So can we use your product as an intermediary? Um, and so we haven't actually replied to them yet because <laughs> we've been at the conference, but um, it's cool to see how, you know, like, he's, like they said in, in, um, this morning, New Zealand can lead the world with this kind of technology. Um, and, you know, we're a team of three and hopefully, you know, we can make this something that's, um, you know, picked up globally and, and yeah, that's kind of what we're doing. Is there any questions? Oh, so, um, just to let you know, we leave the questions uh, for the end of the session. So all three uh, oh, cool. presenters okay. are going to present for about 15 minutes each and then we have a slightly longer Q&A session towards the end. So, if you... Cool. Or do I have any more... To, uh, do, does anyone want to see anything else before I finish or... Shall I jump now? All good? Are you doing Tadeo? Ah, we would do Tadeo. As soon as Tadeo Māori is supported by um, like a really... Uh, by, well, by Google speech to text. At the moment, they haven't um, allowed for Tadao as a AI sort of speech recognition um, language. I know they're planning on doing it, and I've been trying to follow them up over the last few years to do it. And I know there's some outfits in Northland that are trying to make speech recognition for Tadao. And as soon as that's available, we can then create Tadao Māori as well, and other languages, community languages. Yeah. That's all. Thanks, Scott. Cool. Thanks, guys.